the second edition of Hall of Fame with Connor Hall. Today I'm joined by a Siena basketball star who was crucial in the team's success last year. That man is Nico Clareth. So Nico, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Connor. Nico, you had a great year last year, averaging just over 13 points per game. You were recognized as one of the top freshmen in the country. And, and as the season went on, you started to play a bigger and bigger role in your team's success. How good was it to see that your hard work was translating to successful playing time on the court? Um, it was real good to see. Uh, I've always been a hard, a hard worker, and I've always loved to win, so I'll do whatever it takes. And just to see that, that come to life, it just really, it really made me happy. So um, I'm pretty satisfied right now. Like I mentioned, Nico, you made it into the top ten of freshman of the year voting before defeated. And Nico, this was this something that you expected heading into the season? And how much of an honor was it to be considered as one of the top freshman players in the country? Only thing I expect going into the season is to go to the championship. All the other stuff is is just a plus or uh, an addition. But it was definitely an honor to be to be recognized for, for my talents and stuff. Along with All right, Nico, Joe Cremo of UAlbany is from here in the Capital Region. So what's it like when you guys played against Joe Cremo? What's it like with playing against him on the court? Uh, just like playing against any other guy, really. Uh, I don't know if he has any target on me or anything, but yeah, I just whoever's in front of me, whoever's guarding me is going to get destroyed that day, no matter if it's Joe Cremo or LeBron James. For the first time ever, the Albany Cup which, for those of you who don't know, is a battle between U Albany and Siena held every year. But for the first time, it's going to be at U Albany this year. Nico, give me your thoughts about that. Uh, it should be fun. It's a different environment. Uh, we're going to be on uh, the away floor this time, so I don't know. I don't know what to expect, but I know our fans are, aren't going to be shy. going to come out and support. It's only about a 25-minute drive from the TU, and I'm excited. All right, the MAC championships are returning to the Times Union Center once again this year. How much confidence does that give your team heading into the tournament, knowing that you'll be playing in front of your home crowd every game, where other teams have to travel maybe a couple hours and don't get the pleasure of playing in front of their home fans? Uh, the MAC does a great job of making the TU as neutral as possible, so even though it is a home venue, it still feels a lot different. They change the baskets. Cows on the floor, um, everything. It changes the seats, all of that. So it kind of, in a way, feels like we're not in the team, but at the same time, it does. So I know the guys are excited no matter what. You just can't wait for playoffs all around. All right, Nico, you're known for your celebrations on the court, and I got to see them firsthand last year as a photographer, and I personally like them, but I know that some other people may not like them. So why do you choose to celebrate, and where do you get all your celebrations from? Um, I I celebrate because I play with a lot of, of passions and and I like to enjoy the game. Basketball is probably the most funnest thing on the planet for me, and I love it so much that I just feel like, why not have fun? Why not try to get the crowd involved? Uh, for people who don't like it, I mean, I just, hey, if you don't like it, then you don't like it. I can't really tell you anything but people have their opinion and um yeah all right last question before we wrap things up with nico claris sienna basketball standout if you had to pick one player that you enjoyed most going up against in the mac who would it be definitely aj english no doubt about it uh they said i was the best player in the league so i went at him every time and uh he wasn't shy of coming back at me and uh, i can't wait to Play him again one day. All right, Nico of Sienna basketball standout, who received national recognition this year. Nico, I know that you're a big Kobe Bryant fan here. So, what did, what has Kobe Bryant done to kind of influence your game? Uh, Kobe, Kobe Bryant is is more than just a basketball role model for me. He's a he's a life role model for me. Uh, he does things his way, but at the same time, it goes 
not unnoticed or under the radar, but it's, it, he doesn't cause any problems or, or anything like that. He might have a little bit of adversity along the way, but he still stays true to what to what he believes in, and he works hard, it's harder than anybody. Everybody knows the Kobe story. And I don't know, he's the passion that he plays the game with and, and how good he is. I mean, Kobe's just an all-around like, hero to me. All right, folks, that will do it for the second episode of Hall of Fame. Nico, Claire, thank you for joining me today. I hope to do it again in the future. No problem, Connor. Thanks for having me, bud. Th thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I'm Connor Hall here saying so long. Standing in the Hall of Fame.